Hey Bears fans, before we jump into today's show, just a little bit of a programming note for you guys. We're going to go live at a different time tomorrow, two hours later than normal, 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Central time. Normally we go live at 3 Central, so subscribe if you haven't already. Join us then, two hours later. Wanted to let you guys know for a little bit of a heads up. I've got a later day tomorrow. I've got to do some things in the morning around the house. So coming in later, later time, but we're still going to do the normal live show. You take your questions, latest news and rumors, all that stuff. So subscribe and join us tomorrow. With that being said, we'll jump into today's video here on Monday. Welcome into Chicago Bears Now. I am your host, Harrison Graham. We got some news to get into and some other topics to explore later on as well. But as you guys know, Bears rookie minicamp is in the books, which means some roster moves have happened. The Chicago Bears Twitter account let us know themselves, right? We have signed six players who participated in in rookie minicamp. They also cut six players. We'll talk about the guys they signed first. Uh, Christian Albright, the linebacker out of Ball State. To uh, I saw a lot of hype around him on the internet over the weekend, so that's cool. John Alexander, the safety out of Charlotte. A.J. Thomas, another safety out of Western Michigan. Northern Arizona defensive end Carson Taylor. Uh, Ohio running back Demontre Tuggle, which means uh, bad news for Master Teague. We'll get to him in a second. And then, yes, my alma mater's finest, Antonio Ortiz, a long snapper. So maybe he'll compete for, with Patrick Scales. He's coming, Scales. Uh, we'll see what happens there. But six players signed. That means some guys have to get cut as well. The most notable one, Ladarius Mack, the younger brother out of Khalil Mack. He will not be back for a third season, it appears. Running back Master Teague is another one. We'll talk a little bit more about him in a second. Landon Lenore, uh, younger brother of Lance Lenore, former NFL wide receiver, he got cut. Savon Scarver, primarily a return guy. They've got a ton of return options, uh, so he did not make it. Jalen Alexander, the Purdue linebacker, and then Amari Carter, the safety out of Miami. We just mentioned two safeties they added, so they went ahead and cut him. Him loose. Little surprise, Master Teague didn't show a little bit more. He had a nice pro day, showed off good athleticism, but clearly uh, there's a reason he didn't play much for Ohio State this past year. He couldn't even uh, survive Bears rookie minicamp. Obviously, Ladarius Mack is now gone. Uh, I'm sure he'll sign on the Chargers practice squad this season, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, best luck to all these guys. These guys worked very hard just to get to this point. Congrats to the guys who got deals and uh, to the guys who exit. Hopefully, they land somewhere very, very soon. Now, Name an undrafted free agent rookie, a rookie this year that will make the Bears 53-man roster. I'm going with the Wisconsin linebacker, Jack Sanborn. Let me know what you guys think. Pinned comment on today's show. So if you get hit with that YouTube ad break, give me one rookie that was not drafted that you think has a chance to make this team. All right, let's talk about some other notes that came out of rookie minicamp. Obviously, Justin Fields did not participate, but Luke Getze, the offensive coordinator, met with the media, uh, took questions uh, after rookie minicamp, obviously talked a lot about rookie minicamp, but also raved about a couple of players. We'll get to Bayless Jones Jr. here in a few moments. He talked highly on him, but uh, Justin Fields, obviously he's a, you know, Big topic for the Bears this offseason uh, for good reason. The Bears need him to work out. He raved about him. Work ethic, leadership, all that stuff. Had nothing but good things to say, which has been consistent with what all Bears staffers have had to say, all the way from the GM Ryan Poles down to assistant coaches now, offensive coordinator Luke Getze. Uh, now, obviously, we've talked about it some. We called out Darren Olofsky last week, who was back at it this morning, saying Fields has no chance to succeed this year with what the Bears have done. People have questioned Fields himself. They've questioned what the Bears have done with the roster around him. National media, you know, has been they've been coming after the Bears. Uh, but uh, the Bears themselves are very confident in fields and where they sit. Here's what Luke Getze had to say. Quote, I've been super impressed with him. I really have. There's no one in the building that works harder than him. There's no one that cares more than him. We're off to a great start. He's really accepted this challenge. We're asking him to learn a lot of new things. He's been a pleasure to work with. And that's the point I want to continue to emphasize. We can all say whatever we want we can all say it break down with the na the national media has their own opinions on everything and that's fine I get that they got to cover 32 teams whereas you know I cover the Bears very very closely uh, but uh, the Bears believe in him that's the point that I want to continue to emphasize I have more thoughts on this in a moment but first I want to ask you guys this question have you subscribed to Bears now on the call-in app chatsports.com slash Bears call -in. type Y for yes type in for no 
Type in if you have no idea what the hell I'm talking about or if you just haven't done it yet. Type Y if you're like, yes, and it's awesome. Let me know. Want to gauge you guys. Type Y for yes. Type in for no. If you haven't, I encourage you guys to do so because uh, we partnered up with the Colin app a couple of weeks ago. It's basically Twitter Spaces meets podcasting. It's much better than Twitter Spaces uh, because this is how it works. Audio social podcasting app. We're going to go live at least once per week, including this Wednesday. I'll give you the time in a second. Uh, and like Twitter Spaces, you can hop into the caller queue, the caller line, request to talk to me, ask your questions. It's your chance to call in and connect with me. It's also my chance to connect with you. I love answering your questions on our Tuesday live shows, but I I want to hear your voices. I want to hear your opinions, and that can happen with the Colin app. So subscribe today, chatsports.com slash Bears Colin. I know over 20% of you guys watch our shows on TV via Fire Stick or whatever it may be, a smart TV. Uh, if, you are, if you're one of those, here's a QR code. Take a picture with your phone right now. Boop. Splash it. Boom. Here's my phone. Just took a picture. Uh, it redirected me to the call-in uh, app. Click the subscribe button. We're going to go live this Wednesday, 6 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Central time. Kind of like our live show on YouTube tomorrow. Same time as that. 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Subscribe. Join us. We'll answer all of your questions. We could talk about any schedule leaks that may have dropped by then because the schedule drops Thursday. We'll have a blast. I want to continue to connect with all of you. Please subscribe if you haven't, and we will see you on Wednesday on Colin. Back to the field stuff, Getsy praising them. Here's my take on all of it because there seems to be a split. Bears love him. They continue to say they believe in him. He's going to grow despite not investing major money and pieces around him. National media, he's screwed with what the Bears have done. Here's my take. Despite the national media having no belief in the Bears and in Justin Fields, I think he's going to shine. I think he's going to take major steps this year uh, and, and be a good player. Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to sit here and say the Bears couldn't do more to help him. I think so. I've been consistent with that. Get another offensive lineman. Get another receiver. I would love those things. But that doesn't mean he's just screwed and has no chance of improving if this is what he goes to work with. I think the coaching staff alone uh, with scheme changes is going to help, which, by the way, Luke Gepsy said this is our offense. Matt Nagy used to say this is my offense. He's going to cater to his player strengths, including Justin Fields. Uh, that itself is going to help. You know what else is going to help? Justin Fields having this entire offseason knowing he's the starting quarterback. That was not the case last year because they dicked around with Matt Nagy uh, and all of that stuff. So – or no, with Andy Dalton and all of that stuff as the starting quarterback. That won't be the case here, uh, so keep all of that in mind. Will Justin Fields have a breakout year? Type B for breakout, type W for won't. Uh, I think he will. I think he absolutely will. Uh, I'm not going to say he's going to be an MVP or anything like that this year, but I think he's going to play a lot better, uh, and I think this coaching staff will put him in positions to succeed. All right, final story here. Valus Jones Jr. continues to impress. Had a strong rookie minicamp. Getsy raved about him as well. Uh, said he has an all-business approach. Uh, we'll explain more so of what he means by that in a second. Uh, and the Bears are clearly excited about his versatility, the type of role he can play in this offense uh, in terms of lining him up uh, around the field and so forth. Here's what Getsy had to say about this. He's all business, man. He came in in a suit. He was ready to go. He takes great notes, brought his own whiteboard to take notes. He came in ready. He was focused. He has a business approach. So I'm excited. He's somebody that's going to be all in, focused in trying to figure everything out. We want versatile guys, guys that can do a bunch of different things, give us an opportunity to do a bunch of different things with each guy. So we don't want just one guy that can run down the field. We don't want one guy that can run a choice route. We, we want guys that can do a bunch of different things. He definitely has that versatility, so that's really cool. It was fun to see this weekend. This guy's going to have an impact from day one. I'm just telling you right now. Uh, you know, the raw reaction we had when they made the pick, Valus Jones in the third round, well, the Bears have a plan for him. This is clearly a guy they study and said, you know what, if we end up with this player, uh, we think he can do – you know, five different things for us. He can be an elite return man, both as a kick and a punt returner. He can take jet sweeps. He can run different routes. Uh, you can dump quick screens to him and get him out in space with his elite 4-3 speed in the 40-yard dash. He can break tackles. He's built like a running back. Uh, they have a plan for him, uh, and he's come in with the right attitude of saying, hey, I want to be an impact player. He keeps talking about how he's talked with Justin Fields every day. I'm excited for this player. Are you? How hyped are you for Valus Jones Jr.? Scale it from 1 to 10. 1 being not at all, this pick sucked. 10 being 
Great pick. Uh, I'm, it's growing on me more and more every day. I'm at about a nine right now. I was at about a five when they drafted him, but the more you hear the clear plan they seem to have for him, I think that's very, very exciting. And that's because he's more than just a gadget guy. He showed his last year at Tennessee he can be an impact player as a receiver with over 13 yards per catch, over 800 yards, and seven touchdowns. I think he plugs in, and he's your number three receiver. But, again, I think he's just an offensive weapon. You look at the depth chart, you know, Darnell Mooney, Byron Pringle are going to be guys that can get some separation. Again, I don't think Pringle's a pure number two, but I think Bayless Jones with his role, he's going to do so many different things that he's going to help this offense week in and week out. I expect Luke Getze to utilize his strengths. He talked about the versatility. Now it's about putting him in positions to succeed. You've got a player that's got good athletic traits and has some skills. Now it's up to the Bears to get him the football at the right time in the right places. And, uh, you know, until we see these guys play games, we won't know for sure, but I feel like we're hearing the right things. They're saying the right things. Now it's going to uh, come down to if they can prove it once football season gets here. Now who's going to have the best rookie year? Type KG for Kyler Gordon. Type JB for Jaquan Brisker. Or you can type VJ for Valus Jones Jr. I'm excited for all three of them. Gordon had some cramps over the weekend. No big deal. It's May. It's rookie minicamp. Uh, you know, they'll get uh, back into shape very, very quickly. All right, appreciate you guys for tuning in to today's show. Subscribe to us on the Colin app, chatsports.com slash Bears Colin. That'll redirect you to the site. Uh, if it uh, if you're on your phone, download the app. It'll uh, give you an option to download it, then hit that sub button, Bears Now on Colin. It's right there. You can also follow my profile if you want. Uh, also, live show tomorrow, 5 o'clock Central, 6 Eastern, uh, different time this week. Uh, so don't miss out on that because, uh, we still want to answer all of your questions and do all of this stuff. YouTube.com slash Bears now here on YouTube. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. I've been Harrison Graham. We will see you guys soon here on the channel.